Members, we have a uh, quorum so we can get started. Um, the Economic and Community Development Committee and the Finance and Business Services Committee public meetings will be live, streamed and recorded for publishing on the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is taken of the meeting. This means that your presence at and all or any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or publicly or published publicly by the Council, including transferring outside of Australia. So with that warning in place, welcome. Um, I declare the Economic and Community Development Committee meeting open and begin with an acknowledgement of country. The Economic and Community Development Committee acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional lands of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, and heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge that they are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We have apologies from Councillor Clarahan, Councillor Antic and Councillor Wilkinson. Is that, are they all the apologies? Yes, they are. Um, can I have someone move confirmation of the minutes? Moved by um, Councillor uh, Abiad and seconded by Councillor uh, Corbell. Um, all those in favour? That's carried. Um, we have no public forums. I have no uh, chair's verbal report. So we can move to items for adoption on block. Um, item seven, draft parklands event management plan. That's okay. Items eight, sorry, item eight, proposed commemorative memorial for past forced adoptions. Item nine, uh, called out by Councillor Vershaw. Item 10, commemorative Chinese rose garden, called out by uh, Councillor Martin. Um, item 11, items for committee to note and receive. There aren't any. Items 12, item 12, out of session information papers to note. Um, I'll read them all out. We'll, sorry, we do we need to call them out? Um, just the second one. Okay, so the live music action plan to be called out. Um, so that calls out all of them. Okay, sorry. No, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. So, uh, members, that means we've got items seven, eight, seven, eight. Moved by the Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Abbott. All those in favour of those items being adopted on the block, that's carried. Thank you, members. So that brings us to um, item nine, um, the funding initiatives review, and that's been called out by Councillor Mitchell. Thank you, Chair. Um, I wanted to uh, make a suggestion or ask administration if this is feasible. Uh, 7.3 uh, talks to uh, specific target environmental, environmental sustainability uh, funding. Um, and it says that uh, basically this is embedded in other criteria, uh, which basically means that it's assessed against sponsorship, etc. Um, but I would like to, there is, I'd like to see whether it's feasible that we could have a separate funding within that um, for green events and green uh, businesses as incentives, um, purely and simply because. To, to tick it off as part of a criteria um, is separate to actually having an incentive that will make events and businesses look at their business through a green lens. Okay, so that's a question. And we'll put that to administration. Um, through the chair, um, yes, uh, councillor's correct that we'd be looking to probably uh, deliver that aspect through incentivisation. So um, our understanding from many event organisers that to shift completely to a green event would be quite challenging for them. Um, and the proposal would be that we would um, do that via um, some sort of contribution potentially. So is that, sorry, if I might if yep, I continue. Questions, just questions, because no one's um, moved it yet. Uh, oh. Happy to move. I'll, I'll second. Okay, so shall we get it moved and seconded and then we can give you a bit more flexibility? Thank you. <laughs> okay, so moved by Councillor Abbey and seconded by Councillor Lani. Was that right? Was that right? Councillor B
Um, I, I'm actually talking about incentive that is separate to a sponsorship arrangement. And I understand that the sponsorship arrangement has an assessment criteria and that through that you will look at how they're addressing their sustainability, but as a separate incentive. And for instance, um, I spoke to councillors when we did a workshop about uh, the cafes in the city, the, the, the coffee businesses using recyclable cups instead of the plastic cups and if there was an incentive program to businesses within the city to change over, I'm sure they would. Many of you would have been to WAMAD on the weekend. They made a decision, a business decision, that their um, cups, everything that goes through the bars are 100% compostable. It's made of cornstarch. Um, so there is the ability that we could incentivise the existing events and businesses in the city to actually look at the potential for using uh, environmental um, supply um, to better advantage rather than just saying it's part of the criteria. Yep, so happy to take that feedback on board. Councillor Martin. Oh, sorry, Chair. What are we oh, talking about? <laughs> yeah, I just I don't understand what we're talking about. What page? I was on 7.3. On what? page number 141. Oh, thank you. So I had a second, second part of it. Please go ahead, Councillor Sean. My apologies. Um, the other one is on 7.8, um, where it said it's proposed, da da da, noting in some cases council planning for organisation and events is intended to support the initiative through a startup phase until they become sustainable. I guess my question is. What period of time are we looking to support a startup and who makes that assessment? Do you have your answer? Um, I'd need to take that on notice, as Councillor, and get some further information from the relevant program manager, um, unless Mr. McNamara has any thoughts. Take on notice. Thank you. Thank you. That's, um, that's it for questions, Councillor Vishal. Councillor Martin, did you have a question? No, it was answered, thank you. Okay. Um, uh, to either of the um, Councillor Abbey and Councillor Malani. Hang on just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else wish to speak on this matter? It's all coming. It's all coming back to us. Yep. Okay. Really, isn't it? I mean. So we have the seat summed up then, Councillor Aviat. Yep. So can I put this item? All those in favour? All those against? That's carried. Thank you, members. Uh, that brings us to um, item ten on the agenda: commemorative Chinese rose garden. Mm -hmm. Councillor Martin, can you put this out? Um, yes. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'd like uh, to propose an amendment. Okay, and uh, the amendment is an alternate, motion. alternate motion that the Economic and Community Development Committee defer consideration of the commemorative Chinese Rose Garden until the next meeting to allow the matter to be considered by APLA later this week. I wonder if we can just get some administrative comment on that because I, my understanding was it was getting to Apple a pretty quick smart. But we're bringing it here. Yeah, we're bringing it here um, for uh, some time reasons. Can I just get some administrative administrative comment? Uh, through the chair, the um, specific resolution that this is responding to um, states 22nd of March. Um, as a date by which we'll report back to council. So to um, to meet that and also go to a committee and APLA, we had to go this committee, APLA on Thursday, and then council next week. Just send it back to council then. Mm -hmm. You don't even need to defer it, can't we just send it straight to council? Vice question, so, Chair. Can I ask them, um, a recommendation for the best way forward? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, through the Chair, if Council is comfortable, we can just go to APLA this week and then straight to Council before. Well, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Can, uh, Chair, may I just know? Just, just yeah. remember, just get that up on, um, on the board properly so that we really want that. Um, you don't need to defer it then. Yeah. 
God on the table. This committee, can we just choose it to choose to send it straight to council? I'm asking for some advice. So we do need to we do need to refer it to consideration so that we can either defer it to or we refer it to the next meeting of council. Which will by its very nature fall after the next meeting of ACLA. Which is the twenty second of So does what up, what's up on there reflect your desire, Councillor Martin? It does indeed. Uh, Councillor Corbell, are you also content with that? I just want to seek confirmation that if we do this, that it is actually going to come to the council meeting on the 22nd. Yes, okay, then I'm fine with that. <laughs> yes or no, for yes. the spec. <laughs> okay. It's a direction of the committee saying yes, it will be presented to council. Right. Um, thank you. Councillor Martin. Uh, Chair, all I wanted to say was that this has happened before and, and really my preference and I think the preference of most councillors is that where matters have not been to ATLA that they be referred to ATLA almost always and then even if it's necessary to refer it directly to council it is still preferable to go to ATLA mm. rather than diminish ATLA by making decisions and then referring them to them. Yeah, I do understand uh, and I, I think administration also to that but in this case the administration was responding to a specific motion that identified this meeting as the meeting that this had to come back to and so they were in a um, clear stick. Um, Councillor Corbell do you wish to add to it, anything to that? Are you happy for us to? Oh, no I'm happy for it to come back to council at this stage. Okay does any other members wish to make any comments or can we put it? No? If you're happy then you summed up Councillor Martin then I'll put that all those in favour, all those against. That's carried. Um, item 12, um, Councillor Vershaw, you wish to um, speak to the live music action plan. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just noted on page 178, uh, there was a... Um, Councillor Vershaw, do you want to move it? Sorry, yes, I can move it. And uh, moved by Councillor Vishal, seconded by Councillor Mulani. I think I hand up first. Um, thank, you. thank you. On page 178, uh, as a key action was Explore a Sister City Music Program. Um, and I just would like to defer that action to the workshop that the CEO is going to be holding on relationships. We do that. So we just, um, at this stage, we just, these are just papers to note. Do you just take that on notice? Um, yep. yep, through the chair, um, that's entirely appropriate and consistent with a recent motion endorsed by council to hold a workshop um, on uh, relationships anyway, so we could feed that into that. All right, anyone else wish to speak to any of these um, uh, items? Okay, that being the case, you've summed up Councillor Vershaw. Then I put that item 10, which is the out of session information papers, to note. All those in favour? All those against? That's carried. Item 13, any other business? Item 14, we don't have any confidential items. That being the case, I can declare the meeting closed. Thank you, members.
Members, I declare the uh, Finance and Services Committee meeting open on Tuesday, the 15th of March at 6 pm sharp. I would like to acknowledge that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pay respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs, and relationship with the land, and we acknowledge our continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. In apologies and leave of absence, we have an apology from Councillor Clarahan, one from Councillor Antic, and also one from Councillor Wilkinson. Can I have someone please move the confirmation of minutes? Thank you. Moved by Councillor Moran, seconded by Councillor Malani. Any debate? None. I put it. All those in favour? All those against? That is carried. We have no public forum. In the way of a uh, item five, chair's verbal report, I'd just like to table a report, procurement of goods and services from South Australia based organisation and measuring economic contribution. It was a motion moved by the Lord Mayor. The report is to be received and noted. Uh, should have been circulated. Do you, do you have copies of it, members? Yes, we do. Okay, can I have someone please receive and note the report? It's an interim report. It is an interim report. That's right. Councillor Moran moved, seconded. Councillor Malani, any questions or debate? I just wonder, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't see it. I just have a quick look at it. Yes, you may. Chair, I'll speak briefly. Lord Mayor, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Members, uh, notwithstanding that this is simply an interim report, the full report, I understand, will be coming back to us in approximately one month. Yes. Are you satisfied, Deputy Lord Mayor? Members, any other debate or questions? If there's none, Councillor Moran, sum up. I'll put that. All those in favour? All those against? That is carried. Items for adoption on block. Item 7, 2015 Review of Confidentiality Orders. Item 8, Local Government Accountability and Governance Amendment Bill. Councillor Martin. Item 9, North Adelaide Golf Course Update and Proposed Master Plan. Item 10, Quarterly Forward Procurement Report. Councillor uh, Martin. Nine, you want item 9 and 10? No, just 9, thank you. So item 9. And eight. Any other item? Anyone for item 10? No. Item 11, out of session papers. Excellent. Can I have someone please move on block item 7 and item 10 and item 11? Thank you, Councillor Milani, seconded by Councillor Corbell. Any debate? I'll put that. All those in favour? All those against? That's carried. In item 8, uh, Local Government Accountability and Governance Amendment Bill. Councillor Martin, do you have a motion or an alternate motion? Uh, yes, I have an amendment. Um, that is to say that I'm proposing that... Sorry, Chair, I'm just finding the page. I'm proposing that the first part of the recommendation stands, but I wish to add what would become a two. So you're referring to informal gatherings all the way A, B, C, D, E, and also the last paragraph where it says starts with the CEO will make a decision, all to state, and you're all adding a paragraph? Yes. So can we number this as one and two would be? Correct, thank you. Yeah, number two, what's the amendment or the change? Uh, the change is that a workshop for elected members will be scheduled in the coming weeks to review standing orders, comma, including the adoption of new provisions of conflict of interest. Any seconder for that? Seconded by Councillor Moran. Just before you speak up, I've got a comment. I just want to double check. Members, I just want to indicate that there is a briefing arranged for the 26th of April to go through the uh, ramifications of the conflict of interest provisions. I am aware of that and that's why I'm moving uh, the second matter, which I will speak to and expand upon, upon that. Okay, so is it, does this reflect your uh, your change, Councillor Martin? Not yet. 
a workshop for elected members be scheduled in the coming weeks to review the standing and orders along comma, the including the adoption of new provisions for conflict of interest. Excellent. Seconded by Councillor Moran. Councillor Martin, you have the floor. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chair. Look, uh, I had no objection uh, to any of the matters raised here, particularly at 11 and 14. But I propose this amendment uh, because here we are again talking about amendments to standing orders that we discussed last year and all agreed at that time uh, was urgent. Um, in fact, do you remember that document? It came to us on the 15th of September last year. We all discussed it. We all had individual meetings with the administration. There was at the time some urgency. I remember uh, you, Councillor Aviat, saying at the time that there were issues that you wanted addressed immediately. I remember the Lord Mayor saying uh, to me privately that he wanted to see amendments to standing orders in relation to conflict of interest and declarations by members. Um, and I had a series of proposals, which I've marked out here, and it all went away. Nothing happened. Um, now, I understood at the time that uh, the acting CEO wanted the matter deferred, but here it is, we come around again, and uh, item 8 talks specifically about amendments not only related to informal gatherings, but also related to conflict of interest. And so it would seem to me that as we are now raising these matters, for which we are all prepared, uh, that we're hurtling along the path into our second year as a council and we still haven't got to it. This would be the ideal opportunity on the 26th to broaden that discussion to include the, the bigger issues of amendments to standing orders that we've all considered previously and argued for. And so members, I'm asking that we just uh, adopt what the administration is saying, but ask also that on the 26th, that workshop, being expanded to allow for the opportunity for comment about standing orders generally. So we can address some of those niggling issues about which all of you have complained from time to time. Councillor Martin, just to clarify, uh, there will be a workshop scheduled as well for, uh, uh, for the standing orders in May. It's part of our legislative requirement. Do you still want to call it before? Well, it, uh, Chair, it seems curious to have one in the uh, uh, workshop on the 26th related to conflict of interest amendments to standing orders, then have another one in May to amend it further. Do the whole lot together and just... Uh, okay, let me ask the CEO if there's any restrictions or issues around time for that. Why is it... Can it be scheduled earlier? If I can assist members, you are currently going through a conversation which relates to your alignment of committees with council and your strategic directions. In adopting the standing orders, the standing orders need to reflect the committee alignment that you choose to receive. That is why the standing orders are proposed to come forward to you in May, because you will have had an opportunity to determine what type of governance arrangements you want for your committee, because at the moment the standing orders relate specifically to the structure that you're operating within. The informal gathering provision was brought to you in this month because the bill indicates that we must have a policy prior to the 1st of April and that's why it was brought to you in this meeting. Okay, well, I, now I understand and this information wasn't made available to me. It is proposed by the administration to discuss with us the structure of our committees that is our meeting structure separately. So it is being proposed that we have a meeting on the 26th, with, which deals with the code of uh, conflict of interest provisions. And that code of conduct, uh, sorry, that um, standing orders conversation we're having is actually about more broadly committee structures. Well, you know. Um, with that information proven to you, prepare to leave this for May and withdraw your motion. Um, uh, yes, I would withdraw the motion. It would be nice if we had known that that was the intention of the administration. So yes, I will. I will okay. withdraw that. We have a motion withdrawn. Members, we have a motion, motion as it is, uh, an item eight. Can I have a mover? Councillor Milani, seconder. Councillor Corbell, any debate or discussion on this? Councillor Milani, sum up. Summed up. Summed up. All those in favour. All those against, that's carried. Okay. Item 9, North Adelaide Golf Course update and proposed master plan. Councillor Martin. 
Yes, look, I'll move that. Um, Can I have a second, please, Councillor Malani? Councillor Martin, have the floor. Look, the only, uh, the only reason that I've uh, moved this um, uh, chair is that uh, in supporting uh, our applying for uh, funding uh, for this master plan, I would ask the administration to come back to us with terms of reference um, once that application has been successful. Um, because in my experience, one needs to be vigilant about the terms of reference because that will determine what actually the outcome is. And uh, I'm particularly concerned to see that um, uh, the master plan that we have is focused on uh, the recreational uses for the area rather than this broader question of the future of the North Adelaide Golf Links, which is contemplated in the Capital City Committee's draft management plan for the parklands. Uh, and indeed, for those who attended Atler's public feedback session recently uh, on the draft management strategy for the parklands, uh, you would remember that uh, a representative of Charles Sturt Council, I think it was Charles Sturt, and suggested that uh, the future of that northern golf links um, was not as a golf course and that it would be wanting to see it carved up as part of the parklands carve up to benefit the residents of neighbouring councils. And so I think it's very important that those terms of reference related to any master plan in the area are matters which are dealt with by, uh, by committee. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Malani is a seconder. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, look, I'd like to see us apply for this um, funding for the grant. Um, we have done some previous work um, in the last couple of years on um, some work, initial work on a master plan. Can I just get an update on how that will be factored in? So it's a question through to the administration through the CEO. Uh, through the Chair, paragraph 11 talks to two reports that have been undertaken in the past. Both of them looked at the current business model of the golf um, course and its operations um, and gave some advice and feedback on how to make it more efficient. So it hasn't actually been a master plan in the broader context around addressing some of those bigger questions that we hope this master plan can achieve. Councillor Malani still have the floor. Um, yeah, I just don't want to go through the same process of having a plan and, you know, we, we, I want something that's very tangible from, from this because we know we need to do something, we know we want to make this a, uh, you know, great business um, operation um, and I'd just like to see us look at, I guess, how we can get some outcome pretty quickly. Master plan. Councillor Murray. Right. <laughs> cool, We've had lots of master plans for the uh, golf course. Um, in there somewhere gathering dust, I think, and some of us might remember the three returning nines um, with the clubhouse work. Look, I agree with um, uh, both the speakers, we need a master plan, but we do need one that's practical and not just a pie in the sky that ends up gathering dust. I particularly, as the mover said, I'm, I'm nervous about the reduced size that's suggested here on page 17 as one idea. Um, reduced size of the North Coast to six holes, to nine holes. I gather that's um, in, la in um, response or somewhere in the direction of the Charles Sturt Council wanting um, the park plans to turn us back on North Adelaide and be their park plans. Well, that's fine as long as they chip in a few million, but I didn't really hear that mentioned. Um, so I do not do not want in any way for us to, for that to slip into the master plan that we want in any way to reduce the North Coast. The North Coast is the hackers course. It's a people. Uh, it's a cheaper course. It's a it's a beginner's course. It's just as valuable as the slicker southern course. Um, most of the people from Charles Sturt um, use it. All the councils to the north, um, outside my house, any time at about five o'clock, there are hundreds of people using it. Very few, I would say, going through our golf club. But I don't think we should mind that at all. It's a public course. So I will fight tooth and nail for any attack on the North Course. It's a very valuable, socially just, um, uh, equally equal course. Um, but the rest I think is fine. But um, I urge that we do look through our cupboards and see. Um, Haynes Charlie did the last one that I remember a few years ago. 
10 years, 15 years ago, that was very interesting. I think sometimes these um, master plans are good in what they reject or what they put up and was not pal palatable. You don't want to go over the same. We don't want to start looking at returning nine golf courses um, with the um, clubhouse down on Memorial Drive again because that was resoundingly rejected by the community and costed too high. So I think sometimes we should look at what we have looked at in the past so we don't waste our time spinning our wheels down that road and then lead to what Natasha is saying to get some actual outcomes. Members, just to note, uh, we are noting uh, this and we are approving for the $50,000 application at this stage. There will be opportunities for you to look throughout uh, this process and have more feedback through it. So please speak to the motion or ask questions directly to the motion. Uh, Lord Mayor. Thanks, Chair. I support the recommendation we have in front of us. Um, the, uh, in terms of the members having visibility to the scope and the terms of reference, I do think is important. I think the timeliness of this is great. Undoubtedly, because of Adelaide Overwood Convention Centres and other infrastructure projects surrounding the North Adelaide golf courses, uh, there is a greater focus on it in terms of its highest and best use. So um, I think timeliness is good and I commend it. Councillor Virtual. No. Councillor Milani, you've already spoken. That's a question. Can you take it offline with admin? Because you've spoken already. Do you want us to ask it? Yeah, just quickly. Go ahead. I could have asked it by now. <laughs> um, I just wanted to quickly ask about the grant, the grant process, because um, part of the um, the business model of the um, golf course is around the club. That's that's a key element of the um, business operation. Would, would the grant cover? Is, is it, does it consider the whole element of the business operation, or is it only related to the sporting element? Because that, that's a key question around the, the outcome we're looking to achieve. Ms. Uh, through the Chair, um, I need to um, follow up on the exact criteria for that grant and if I feel that it would in any way compromise the feedback that I've heard tonight, then I wouldn't <coughs> apply for it. So um, I'll take that on notice. Thank you. Thank you, Members. Any other comments? Councillor Martin summed up. Summed up. I'll put that. All those in favour? All those against? That item is carried. <laughs> members, we move on to uh, other business, item 12. Any other questions or motions without notice? Here that there's none. Can we have someone move item 13, exclusion, to consider two items, item 14, Central Market Arcade Redevelopment, and item 15, Wingfield Update. Moved by the Deputy Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Milani. All those in favour? All those against, that item is carried, if I could ask. Sorry, I need to move another one as well. Item 15 also, the exclusion, if I could have someone move that. Moved by Deputy Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Milani. Any debate? All those in favour? All those against, that item is carried. If I could have, uh, please, any members of administration or the public that don't have a direct interest in those, well, not interest <laughs> in those issues, please exit the room. And if we can have the camera.
and move for us to go out of confidentiality. Moved by Councillor uh, Malani. I can just do it apparently. We'll open the door. Now that the door's open, members, I'll close the meeting at 7 pm. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Yes, we're giving a lot of this. So, it's our. Um, no, 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 it's our. Um, we should work on that.